Not too bad. So are we debating on here or can we call privately and debate? Uh, here would be better. Uh, I, I don't want to do it privately because I want um, it to be publicized so that people yeah. know I actually did it. Add, you I want to edify the people, Hang educate on. the people. Hang on, just let me speak. I paid $50. Yep, so go for it. If you want a proper debate, you need to have my opener opened up. Uh, you can just read it to us or you can post it in the Discord so you chat. Have, so, you, so you have my opener ready? Sure, let's say yes. Go for it. Okay, no. Well, then what, what's the first three words of my opener then? Um, something about colors. No, it's something about shapes. <laughs> Damn it. I had a 50-50 on that one. So just go for it. Make your argument. What is your argument? No, no. I need to know that you've read my opener. I haven't Because read I it. want to compose. You haven't read it. No. You said to me that you will not try to debunk my message without me paying you first. So you clearly yes. have read it. Uh, no, you paid me. I'm here to debate. I didn't read it, though. I know I know um, that you said colors and shapes prove God somehow. I don't know how you got to that conclusion, though. Okay, so well, I'll just start from the start. So are you listening? Yes, go for it. Okay. So shapes exist. Therefore, the universe is finite. Therefore, God created the universe. Okay. That's the first sentence. I'll... Hang on, this is my opener, so I'll just give me another 30 okay, seconds. Sure. Um, so using using deduction, eternal or from nothing, infinite matter cannot move. So that addresses the Big Bang in a non-theistic worldview. So that's cosmology slash logic. So shapes proves God and colors proves God of the Bible. But that we'll jump to that theological discussion later. So, what is your response to my first two messages? Uh, well, actually, I start with the question: What do you, how do shapes prove the universe is finite? Um, because an infinite universe can't have more particulars inside of itself. You know what a shape is, sir? Uh, yeah, a shape is an abstract description of objects. A shape is a three-dimensional object with height, depth, and width. So your vessel is a shape. Well, no, because <laughs> there are two-dimensional objects like squares and circles, so it doesn't need to be three-dimensional. I know what a shape is, but again, a shape is a description of an object. If you mean like a physical, do physical objects exist? Yes, physical objects exist. Is that what you mean yes, by shape? We are Just... living in, we are in three-dimensional space. What consists sure. in the space uh, objects, finite objects. Sure, yes. Yes, so therefore, using empirical evidence, we know that the universe is finite. Do you know what finite means? Yeah, finite means it has a beginning. It's not eternal. So you're saying uh, the Big Bang, right? The Big Bang is the beginning something? No, that's just an assertion. My second sentence. That well, yeah, so, so I'm trying to... Cannot I'm trying to see how you get from shapes to not infinite. So, for example, there Hang could on, be... I'm, just let me address your first point. So uh, okay. You asserted the Big Bang. Well, no, no, that was, so that was a question. From... That was a question. I was asking, is that your evidence for why it's eternal? So if that's uh, not what you're using, I'm trying to figure out what are you using to say the universe isn't eternal? How do shapes get us to a non past eternal universe. For example, you can have a universe with shapes that just existed past eternally. Why would that be a problem? So um, there will be no movements in an in eternal and infinite universe. The universe wait. had a beginning. Wait, wait, wait. So um, you, can, you, can have, yeah. you can have a universe that's past eternal and has movement and has shapes. Why would that be a problem? Hang on. You're not making any sense. So... Just to address your first point about the Big Bang. Well, no, no, the Big Bang wasn't the point. That, hang that on, sir. Hang on, sir. Let me respond. <laughs> you made the assertion of the Big Bang. Uh, naturalists, non theists, are still stuck at zero because an infinite structure of matter can't move to get the Big Bang. What is your response to that? Again, the Big Bang was a question. So I was asking you, is that what you meant by the universe had a beginning? So if it's not what you meant, that's totally fine. That was not a point I made. It was just a question. Uh, so when my question is, is how exactly do shapes imply that the universe had a beginning? Because you can have shapes and you can have change in a perfectly eternal universe. 
those don't mean the universe had a beginning. Hang on, you, you, you're, you're eluding or dodging my question. Is that, well, my, my previous statement is that in the worldview of a non theist, infinite matter cannot move to get the Big Bang. No, no, one, stuck at zero. no one no one thinks that. So no one no one atheist thinks that, so that doesn't represent our position at all. Well that's okay. Well then you need to elaborate on your assertion. Okay, so again my assertion is my assertion is a universe can exist with matter and shapes and change eternally. That's my position. No, that's my second sentence debunks your claim. Oh, okay, how? Explain how. In, in, you can't have in infinite matter, you can't have finite shapes inside of itself. So, for example, a brick. Take a look at a brick. Do you think a brick can have more particulars inside of itself without a outside intervention? I don't know what that means. Like bricks definitely have more particles inside themselves than the number of bricks. I don't know. I don't know what you mean. But but of different particulars. For example, hydrogen and helium. So sure. to go back to my original point, is that in the in the false worldview of a non-theist, infinite matter cannot move to get the Big Bang. So again, I'm not a, a, I'm not following a, your argument here. So yes, we can in a naturalistic universe, we can perfectly well have infinite matter and it can move and it can create Big Bangs. There's no contradiction there. No, infinite means at all places at the same time. No. There's no boundaries. No, that's not what yes. infinite means. So Yes, it does. No. So, for example, you can have infinite numbers, one, two, three, four, five, six, and there's lots of space between the numbers. Like you could have one and a half, one and three quarters or whatever. So you can have infinite can just mean Incorrect. the numbers. What? I'm going to debunk your claim again. Go for so it. Are you, I'm assuming you're referring to pi. No. I'm just numbers. One, so two, the, three, four, five, yes, six, seven, that's, eight. That's the, the, the radius of a circle. Pi is an irrational number. Uh, no. Because the circumference... Hang on, sir. I'm not pi saying pi. I'm saying just one. No, numbers, like standard numbers. That's one, two, un, three, four, five, that's six. An un regress so not an infinite regress that's it's not regress means backwards so numbers go up that's not a regress that's an infinite so i don't know what you mean because infinite does not mean it occupies everything that's not what infinite means infinite just means it's an uncountable set so for example you can have oh, that's what unlimited means not infinite sir what infinite is a set value you're referring to an unlimited set of numbers that's why you need a line. That's why you have to draw a line in between the decimals. Okay, so let me, so I'm just going to, I'm going to go line. ahead and Google this. Infinite definition, infinite definition mathematics. Infinite is a quantity or state, uh, a quantity of endlessness or having no limits. Infinite definition math in general, infinity is a quantity or state of endlessness or having no limits. It, it, I don't know where you get your sources from, but that's that's an unlimited uh, value you're referring to. Oh, okay, not I can an infinite value. But look, that's not what you're trying to elude from my original point. Well, I, I don't so, know what your I'll point just, is. So, so your argument I'll just was. Read, I'll just. Uh, well, let me let me see if I can steal man you. So your argument was is that shapes in a finite universe prove that shapes and movement in a finite universe. Prove that a naturalistic universe has to have a beginning. I think that's your point, right? Something like that? No, this is why I said to you from the beginning, can you have my opener set up? Well, so your I first sentence doesn't, doesn't make sense. So. so I don't have to reiterate my sentences. Well, no, so the, the sentences don't make sense. So even, even if I read the paper, it would I still not make sense. Look, I paid you $50. Yes, go for it. So can you just go for it. Finish? So... Shapes exist, therefore the universe is finite, therefore God created the universe. What is your response to that? That isn't Without an argument. Your opinion, so, uh, that's just your opinion. No, an argument is something that the conclusion follows from the premises, right? Would you, would you agree to that? So, so I'll ask you a clarifying question. Sure. In, a, in, the, in the false worldview of a non-theist, what would you see beyond the edge of the universe? 
um, more natural stuff that is isn't the universe. <laughs> <laughs> more natural stuff. So yes. what would you see beyond that more natural stuff? <laughs> Just more natural stuff forever. <laughs> uh, so you're so and what would you see beyond that, sir? More so natural you, <laughs> stuff forever. Um so that's why it's an un, you're referring to unlimited, not infinite. So therefore and hang on, just I'll ask you another clarifying question. Is that natural stuff you asserted? Is that infinite in size? Yes. It's infinite in size. Yep. So therefore, there was no edge to begin with in a non-theistic worldview. So therefore, right. you're stuck at zero. Mm. That infinite matter cannot move. No, that, that goes back to my second sentence. So it was never zero. That's true. But it was always infinite. So it was always moving. It was always infinite. It didn't have a beginning moving. Um, if it was always moving, that would mean that it's finite. That would mean that it has an edge. So no. then that goes back to the original question. Mm -hmm. Is that what is beyond the edge of the universe in a non fusing worldview? No, always, that always moving always does not mean it has an edge. Predicts yourself, so you're still stuck at zero, sir. It is no, close back no. To you, have, you haven't, you haven't that shown is. that movement means edge. So it can have a movement and not have an edge. That's perfectly fine. Um, if, for anything to have movement has an edge because so, what no. would you see in a non-theistic worldview beyond that edge no, no so movement does not something. mean an edge so, so you keep saying that movement means edge there is nothing that means movement means edge you don't need an edge to have movement that's not the case so to go back to my second point because that's just an assertion which can easily be debunked okay how do you debunk it debunk you can't it. there is no hang on there is no big bang in a non-theistic worldview, because infinite matter can't do anything. So what is your response to that? That no one in physics thinks you're right. They all think there's infinite matter and it can create the Big Bang just fine. So I don't know. That's just another assertion. Well, do you want the papers? Like Sean Carroll's debate with William Lane Craig, where he just literally came up with 30 models that all do that. I don't know. Um, and you don't know the, why are you appealing to authority? Because you don't know the consensus. Well, you said and that's a fallacy. Hang on, that's a fallacy. No, because data is available for everyone, and you don't know if these physicists are apatheists or satanists to begin with. Why? So you can't appeal. You can't just appeal to one authority. Right, I didn't. So, I said Sean Carroll showed thirty different models. So he, he's not like he didn't come up with them. He just showed here are the thirty different models that are in physics, and they all say the universe is past eternal with just natural physical stuff, and there is no and it has movement, and it all created the Big Bang. None of them have a problem. Um, that's see, that's just an assertion. You may just be making that up as you go along. Yeah, you don't don't take um, my word for it. You don't so have to take you don't have to take my so word to, for it. You you to, can you can go wait 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 wait. wait. The, I want to prove to you I'm not making it up. Appeal. So so you said I'm making this up. Well, you, you can go appeal. wait wait. You can go so you're to, appealing to one, hang on, sir. You're appealing to one individual. No. You don't know if that individual is a a parthenist or a satan. No no. Again, I'm so not that, appealing that, to one individual. No, no, no. So again, I'm appealing to a person who has a list of resources of academic peer-reviewed papers that all say what I'm saying on his website. You can go to his website. You can find all yeah. of these references of all of the peer-reviewed academic papers that show this to be the case. So it's not just this one guy. This one guy is just a resource that shows more of the papers. But I could do that same thing. I could just appeal to fierce who say that the Big Bang has many problems. So that appealing to authority doesn't get you anywhere. Well, so, no, no. so you said back, you you said it cannot be the case that a, an infinite universe with shapes and matter can have past eternal. And if I can show you authorities in the field that show yes, it can be the case, that proves you wrong. So it is a possibility. Now you don't need absolute agreement on that just to show it's a possibility. So if you say it's impossible, and I can show experts in the field say it actually it is it is possible, that disproves you. No, I, I don't. I can't follow what you're saying because you're circumvented. So, to go back to my original point, eternal or from nothing. So this, this I'm referring to the worldview of a non-theist. So eternal or from nothing. No one believes from nothing. Matter cannot move. 
It cannot move, sir. Yeah, again. There's no – and it can't – hang on. There's, it cannot move to get the Big Bang, and it cannot move to make more shapes inside of itself. Yes, therefore, it can. Therefore – that's just an assertion. Therefore, the universe had a beginning – because of the empirical evidence around us. So in my universe, I'm a naturalist. I think that matter can exist and shapes can exist and change can exist eternally. My model does that. Um, that's your opinion on that, that it can't is your assertion. You have not proven that it can't. So prove that it can't. But we, we are living in the same universe. Shapes exist. Yes, shapes exist. Universe. I agree. Shapes All exist. Right. Or just matter exists. So, and that's fine. And you can have that eternally with change and it can create the Big Bang. No problem. Prove it can't. No, that's just another assertion. No, no you, so, you're look, assuming I'm gonna can't. Say, I'm going to hang on, hang on. Infinite matter. So, for example, no, 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 you're repeating take, yourself. Hang, you're repeating yourself. So, wait, 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 so, wait, 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 wait. I need clarification here. So, you keep asserting that it can't. You need to prove that. You need some evidence to support that. Yeah, you just, I'm, I'm telling you. I'm going to explain okay. it to you. Okay. So, this is, for example, a, a brick, so a solid brick, a solid shape. So a brick would be a solid shape. So how do you get more finite particulars inside a solid brick without an immaterial and omnipotent consciousness? If the brick already had them, that would be how? No, I'm talking about new particulars. Um, if the particulars already existed eternally and they combine together, then you can get them just fine. But there's no movement in that brick. Yes. So that's, you can't, see, what you're trying for the audience listening, what, what Tom is alluding here is that he's saying that the universe, all the stars and planets have already existed. No. In that false worldview, hang on, sir. In that false worldview, there will be no movement in infinite uh, space. No, so, so that's we have we have brick analogy. No, there's this thing called vacuum states where virtual particles can pop in and out of existence through all space and all time, everywhere. There's no, movement. Sir. what? There's that would require a process because right. for something to pop into existence on its own, there's no room for things to pop into existence by itself. That's there would be space. a process to it. Right. It, there would be a step to it, like a one, two, three. It wouldn't just pop into existence uh, instantly. Yes. So, so, so there's this thing called vacuum states, which are a product of Hilbert space, and Hilbert space has fluctuations which produce virtual particles. Those are the steps, one, two, three. They're all in a natural world. They can exist eternally and have change and create the Big Bang. Well, that, that would... Hang on. No, you, you're addressing... You jump from... You, you shifted from from gear seven all the way down to zero. So huh? to, to address your, hang on, to address your assertion that things can just pop into existence. Yes. There's no room, there, there's no room in already infinite occupied space for things to pop into existence. If, if that was the case that things popped into existence, that would be God doing it because no. there would be a process, a gradual process one, two, three. It wouldn't just pop into existence. So, right. So, space so isn't address, infinitely it, occupied. Most of it's empty, empty space. And in empty space, you have this thing called the Hilbert field. And the Hilbert field can produce virtual particles that pop into existence from fluctuations in the Hilbert field. It's not infinitely packed. Infinite does not mean there's stuff everywhere. It's not what it means. So, there are particles in some places and not in other places. And the virtual particles can come into existence in the places where there are not particles. Look you're, trying, uh, look, you're trying to allude from my second sentence, but to address your assertion of empty space, um, empty space has height, depth, and width. So yes. even if you assert your, – your, your, your analogy of space is like me walking into a room and saying there's a lot of empty space in this bedroom, but the bedroom still exists. Uh, so your, your assertion of empty space is actually something because – it is three-dimensional. It is no. infinite in size. Yeah. Well, space is so, a thing, you know, yes, but it's not because it has size. But I don't see why you think that's an argument. So something okay, has so always then, existed. No, no, no. That's, that's you. Hang on. Wait, wait, wait. So, that, no, you made this argument, but I'm, sure. I'm, I'm, I just want to know, because I may get a laugh out of this. 
in your in a in a false worldview of a non theist what would empty space look like, sir? It's empty space. It looks like Hilbert what, space. What does it look like? What what color does it have attached to it, sir? It doesn't have any color because it doesn't reflect light. Uh, so no, but you would still the the law of identity. You have to identify it for you to make that assertion that it's empty. So mm. what does empty space look like, sir? It's a Hilbert field. Uh, and what does that field look like, sir? It doesn't reflect light. Um, so you still have to identify something right. to, for you to come to that conclusion. Right. So what does it look like? So, so not everything that exists reflects light, so you don't have to see everything for it to exist. Like, we don't see neutrinos. They, they don't reflect light, but they still exist just fine. Um, but you still see colors. That's mm. the point I'm trying to get across, is that for you to right. identify something, there is a color attached to it. No, That's there's the law of identity. neutrinos have no color. They don't. Look, I don't want to go down to... I don't want to go down to... No, no, you keep so saying, you keep saying my... that to identify something you need colors. Like, no, you don't. You do not need colors to identify things. Um, for your assertion of empty space, but to go, hang on, to go back to my original point, that I'll just reiterate my first sentence for the listeners. The shapes exist, therefore... The universe is finite, therefore God created the universe. Yes, and none of that, that makes sense. So, so you can't say therefore. An argument, you need premises and the conclusion. So a premise is, is all men are mortal. Premise two, Socrates is a man. I gave you a premise, sir. What's a premise? Look, I don't want to, you're, you're trying to elude. I gave you a what, premise. Shapes is not a presupposition. What's Shapes the premise? is all around you. What's the premise? Shape. A shape has height is a three-dimensional object. Shape isn't the premise. Um, empirical evidence is also not a premise. So a premise is all men are mortal. That's a premise. Look, so you can't elude or refute what I'm telling you. Well, are so you're right. I, I have no idea what you're saying. I'll so. just reiterate. Because what I'm saying is that because the universe is finite, God, who is infinite in size, exists inside and outside the edge of the universe. Okay, again, that, and that God and, and hang on, and, and and God would have to be non-physical to interact with the physical universe to make stars and planets. So again, There's no getting around that fact. Uh, well, that's not not a not a not an argument. So a premise is a sentence that can be true or false. That's so just another assertion. That a premise is a sentence that has to be true or false. So that's the definition of a premise. So shapes if that's a you sentence you don't know what a shape is hang on i'm not gonna let you i paid 50 dollars. sure i don't know what a shape is having this debate on a private what? call no not private definitely not it was planned to be on a show so look so so, so what what do you think a shape a is shape, a, a shape would be your head your head has height depth and width so a, a shapes exists therefore <laughs> the universe is finite Therefore, God created the universe. Wait, so my head is then a how shape? Are you getting around that? My head is a shape. That is... Um, you're, you're saying my head is a shape. Um, your, your head has dimensions. To yes, yes, it has dimensions. And so you're saying just anything with dimensions is a shape? That's what... That's. Uh, look, I could... Look, I could just use the word objects instead. Okay. It doesn't okay. matter how yeah, I, I just, it. I'm just trying to be clear here. So, from empirical evidence. You can't deny okay, so empirical evidence. objects make sense. So when you say shape, I think of like squares and circles and triangles, like abstract objects. So that, that didn't make sense to me. So if you're saying object, objects exist. Yes, I'm with you. Objects exist in the universe. Okay. Okay. And I'll so, use objects instead. Okay. So objects so exist. I'll reiterate my, I'll, yes, I'll reiterate my first sentence. For you and the listeners, objects exist, therefore the universe is finite, therefore God created the universe. Okay. So that's just basic logic. And this and those basic 12 logic. words basic comports logic. with the laws of thermodynamics, it comports with the law of cause and effect, <laughs> and it comports with Hubble's law, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. Uh, so you can't – and empirical evidence. So, so there is no such thing as the law of cause and effect. That you should you probably Google that one. But there's a bigger problem here: is that shapes exist is is true. Yes, I, I agree. Objects exist for sure. 
but you didn't say because objects exist, how does that show God or how does that show the universe had a beginning? Um, that shows that the universe is finite and for something to be finite had a beginning. Well, no, 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 no. And how? beyond that, hang on, sir. No, no, and beyond you skip, that, you skipped a step. Object, so you said objects exist, the universe is finite. So, how does objects existing prove that the universe is finite? Because an infinite universe can't have more particulars inside of itself because there is no movement in already occupied. So, so you said, space. you said. A universe can't have more particulars inside of itself. What in an, in the false? Hang on, in the false worldview of a non-theist, this goes back to my second sentence: that infinite matter can't move. Why? There's no shift from zero to one no shift in already infinite one. matter. There's no Big Bang in a non-theistic worldview. So, right, matter didn't exist, but the Hilbert space did exist. So energy existed, and energy can malform into matter. So you can go from energy to matter perfectly fine. Yeah, well, okay, if you make that assertion, that's the second law of thermodynamics, that energy can convert into matter, but you're still stuck at zero. Well, there is never in zero energy. Infinite... No, I'm talking about the time... Time, I'm, I'm referencing time, so uh, you're still the the the, nat, the the non theists are stuck at zero because infinite material cannot move to get the Big Bang. What? You, so no, you can't. You can't. I, I, I was going to say. So again, there there was not infinite material. There was never infinite material. There is infinite Hilbert space and energy. That's perfectly fine. And energy can form into matter just fine. No, no problem. No, because that, that assertion of you saying space, that space is the infinite structure of matter because it consists of height, depth, and width. No. So your assertion of space, no. because it, it, that space, that, that assertion you made of space would be infinite in size, it would be eternal, it would be non-physical, and it would be three-dimensional. So that actually comports with the Bible. So that would be what? God. God because is if it's space. Because if it's not infinite, that means it's finite. So something else exists with that finite particular. Uh, no. So again, there's no contradiction with saying there is just a natural universe, and there is a natural thing that exists eternally, infinitely, or outside of space and time if you want. That's not a problem either. Both of those can exist naturally. And you don't need a conscious mind for that. So you can just be nature, just energy. That's it. That's all you need. Um, you do need a conscious mind because when you close your eyes, your thoughts have no boundaries. We are what? made in God's image. Hang on. We are made in God's image. So, And you can test this out for yourself. When you close your eyes, you can visualize anything, and your thoughts have no boundaries to it. Wait, I can't that visualize a God's, square circle. That that ex, that explains um, God could just change the assigned values of, things, but uh, that explained God's infinite size. So, so, so I can't I can't imagine you, anything. That's false. Like I can't imagine anything. I don't know. Even if I could imagine anything, that wouldn't be evidence of a God. So, how does the fact I can imagine? No, stuff, hang on, sir. That I'm just explaining infinite uh size we can test this out ourselves because our, our when we visualize things in our mind they have no boundaries what are you so talking about yes they to, do so to go back to my second sentence no no, no. explain that more because you said when we visualize things in our minds they have no boundaries like yes they do things in our minds definitely have boundaries what are you talking about no we can i can visualize something and i could keep pushing it back and back and back in my mind there's no, there's no end to it. Wow. Okay. Why? I don't get what that. What do you mean by that? Like, I'm just giving you. It's just a way. I'm, I'm just making it simple for those listening yourself to understand God's infinite size, His omnipresence. Um, uh, to, so we can say nature is omnipresent and exist infinitely, and no problem. Without no, because that's what I was going. That's 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 exactly what I was going to get back to. My second sentence: that 
infinite matter cannot move. Yes, sure can. Prove, prove infinite matter can't move. Um, take a, a brick again. That brick, brick isn't infinite matter. Cannot move to make more uh, more uh, particulars inside of itself. A brick isn't infinite matter. Infinite matter can move and it I'm, can I'm change. I'm giving you an example. I uh, I don't see what so, how your okay, example makes no well sense. Then, Bricks are finite things. They aren't infinite. Bricks can change. There is vacuum space inside of them where they can generate new particles. The particles in bricks break down to present new uh, particles all the time. Not a problem. But that makes it even that makes it even worse for yourself because if the brick was infinite, it still can't move to make more particulars inside of itself. The particles Look, in the bricks lost, are moving. You've lost. Hang on, sir. I've had this discussion with hundreds of people. They lose. They, they are path here, Satanists. They lose at the very first sentences. Okay, so bricks just are moving. The, bricks, the, bricks are moving just fine. The, all the particles on, in bricks hang are on, moving. Sir. What are you talking hang on, about? Sir. I know. I know what you're doing here. You're eluding, but for the for the people listening, I have had this discussion with many people, and they all express their opinions and their hate after the first two sentences. So what Tom is doing here, is I still he is have no idea what you're saying. Trying to, he's trying to uh, give the impression that uh, God has to take like thirty minutes to debate. All it takes huh? is like under thirty seconds. So I still have no idea what you're saying. So again, bricks are moving just fine. The particles in bricks generate new particles all the time. I, I have no idea. Like if, if everything in the universe was completely stationary, right, that couldn't create new particles, but it's not. The universe is moving just fine. It yeah. always has been. You're not fooling me, sir. So I'll just reiterate my first two sentences. So what, this is going back to the start. Um, Objects exist, therefore the universe is finite, therefore God who is non-physical, omnipotent, omniscient, et cetera, et cetera, created the universe. So my second sentence, eternal or from nothing, infinite matter can't move. That's the false worldview of a non fear Okay, again, that doesn't work. I can, you need to have a, a premise. You need to have a sentence that has a truth value, and then there has to be a second sentence that follows from the first sentence that leads to a conclusion. Yours doesn't work. Yes, I already have the first sentence. Shapes exist. The shapes are all around us. That's empirical evidence. So therefore, Ugh. so what follows next is that the universe is finite. So the universe is also an no, that object. Doesn't, that, that's the problem. So that doesn't follow. Shapes exist, or objects exist. Nothing follows from that other than objects exist. There's only two options, sir. It's either finite or it's not finite. It's either yes. infinite in size or it's finite. Right, so shapes, so shapes stop exist. Trying, stop they you, could be you, finite. When you interrupt, you're not fooling me. I'm, I'm not trying to fool you. So, I'm trying to stay on the point. So yes, shapes exist. They could be infinite. They could be finite, which means... You can't say therefore they're infinite. You'd have to you have to show one or the other. You can't just state. I didn't it. say that it's infinite. I said that it's finite. Right, right. Sorry, so I got that backwards. So you can't just say it's finite. You have to prove it. Shapes exist. Correct. They could be infinite or they could be finite, which means you can't just assert they are finite. You have to uh, give some reason. You don't know what these definitions mean. Finite means it's limited in size. It has an edge to it, a boundary to it. So your head is finite. So to reiterate my first Okay, wait, wait, sentence, I, think, I, think I, I think I'm understanding. So you're saying that, like, I am a shape and I have limits. Like, I'm not infinite, right? So yeah, I'm you're, finite. You're, you're finite inside. Why does that mean that everything is finite? That means that the universe, do you know what the universe is? Yeah, yes, but the fact that I'm, I have a limit doesn't mean the universe has a limit. Like, why, why does my limit and shape's um, limit mean the universe has a limit? Because using the, the law of excluded middle and deduction, because an infinite universe can't have more particulars inside of itself, Therefore, the universe has to be finite. Okay, that doesn't make sense. So no, I'm finite. This yes. is, I was, hang on, sir. I was going to say there's no eluding from that. So your assertion that it doesn't make sense is just an assertion. So uh, No, no. It's like so, I literally cannot make sense of what you are saying. So it's not just an assertion. I literally do not understand what it you is you're saying. saying. Hang on, sir. Are you saying that the, are you, are you making the assertion that the universe is infinite inside? 
Infinite in size, yes. The universe is infinite in size. Okay, so how do you get stars and planets because inside already infinite uh, matter? Because stuff in the universe is moving, even though it's infinite. But I'm, I'm addressing the origin of this infinite matter. We're not talking about the here and now. So how do you get... Uh, uh, it's always existed. Hang on, sir. How do you get inf uh, finite particulars in already infinite in an already infinite structure without an outside prime mover? Because it moves on its own. What moves on its own? The infinite space. Infinite universe. No, the infinite, the infinite space would be the infinite structure of the material. Right. Because the material consists of height, depth, and width. Right. So that debunks time. No, it's just it existed forever. Height, depth, and width have existed forever. Not a problem. So to reiterate my question, in, a, in the false worldview of a non theist how on earth <laughs> do you get more particulars inside of an already infinite structure without an outside prime mover? Uh, it's always existed. It's always been so there. It's saying, always moving. This is what I said. Hang on. Hang on. This is what I said earlier, that Tom is alluding to the conclusion that all the stars and planets have already existed. No, no. Energy, <laughs> so, the energy that makes the stars and planets has always existed, and it became the stars and planets. No, because that infinite structure would have to, it would just be one giant uh, ball, a shape of something. You can't have multiple shapes inside of it. If you're making the assertion that that infinite structure uh, formed itself, that would, that would mean that the infinite structure would have formed into, that's just, that's just the second law of thermodynamics, what I said earlier. What? Is that, all, hang on, I'm almost finished. All you're referencing entropy, the second law of thermodynamics. So the only movement you would get, the only fo the change of form that you would get is energy converting into matter. So that still doesn't get you out of, out of zero. It's an infinite structure of matter can't do anything. So you're still non theist are still stuck at zero. No. So the second law of thermodynamics only applies to closed systems. Energy has always existed. The first law of thermodynamics says energy cannot be created or destroyed. So God can't create energy. It's always existed. I know um, what these laws are, sir. Okay. What, what, are the four, what are the four laws of the thermodynamics? Now you're alluding. No, so no, you said you know what they were. What are the four on, laws on, of thermodynamics? To go, hang on. You, you said you know what they were. My, you said you knew what they were. To, you're, not, you're, you're trying to allude from this question. No, no, so you, said, we, you said you, you knew back, what they were. How is this an illusion? You said you to, knew what they were. To go back to my original point. So you don't, you don't know what the they only, were. The only movement that you would get in a non theistic worldview is energy converting into matter. But which the if, if, structure, if, if to, energy converts to matter it can then move it then has gravity it then has mass it can then interact with other matter it can then produce hydrogen and oxygen and lithium and it can form stars so as soon as energy converts to matter you then get a universe if you get enough matter you get a universe no because there are ch that's just an assertion because you can't have do you know what stars and planets are you can't In, have they're made of matter yes hang on in infinite structure of matter can't make finite particulars inside of itself if energy without, can convert to matter then yes it can so you said no, in, you said in a non in a non-theistic universe you can have energy convert to matter that's all you need you get the whole universe just from that no but there are stars and planets the Which, infinite structure of matter is singular you can't no. have different multiple particulars inside of itself and not only that so energy is infinite energy no energy is infinite matter is not infinite matter is a specific form of energy so you can have infinite energy and then it can bottle up into like a string like a knot together to produce matter just fine so in, matter isn't infinite 
energy is infinite, and energy can be like a string. It's a, a matter is a knot in the string. So you have an infinite string just going on forever, and there can be a knot in the string right in the middle, and then you get a particle. And you have another knot, and you have two particles. And the two particles combine together to create hydrogen or helium. So you can get all those with infinite, infinite energy, finite particles. I don't see what you're saying here. I don't know what you're saying is uh, like again. So this goes back to my second sentence is that in a non theistic worldview, eternal or from nothing, infinite matter slash energy can't move to make more particular. Sure it can. Energy can move just fine in infinite space. No problem. But what? the energy is the space. Uh... Yes, that's correct. So, so the energy is the space. I mean, you just contradicted yourself because if you're saying because no. I because infinite matter, infinite energy. If you're saying that this imaginary space exists, that would automatically put the infinite energy to a finite particular. No. So that would mean that this. Hang on, that would mean that this space that you're alluding to would be God because that space would be non-physical, that space would be eternal. No, that space there's nothing non-physical there. It's all just physical, physical, physical energy. Power. All just physical energy. Physical energy is infinite. Okay, it can so continue to move infinitely. Saying, hang on, so, so hang on. I'm going to debunk your message again. Sure. So if you're saying that space is physical, yep. there's no movement. No, it moves just fine. There is movement in it, and it's physical no, movement. How does, it's, because you're, 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 you're back to... To reiterate my second sentence, your your back. Your second sentence is wrong. So space matter. space can exist and your is physical answer, and can answer, move. Yeah, you're you're back to my second sentence that infinite matter can't move. Yes, it can. It can move just fine. It can it can move eternally, infinitely, and never stop moving. So no, it's not because for it to move, that means that it's finite in size. Correct. No, it means a part of it is finite in size. So like I can wiggle my so finger then, and my finger is finite in size, but I can have like an infinitely long uh, dick and that'd be fine. So I can wiggle my finger and have movement, but still not be look, finite. You're, you're, look, I know what you're trying. I know what you're You're not the first I've had this discussion with. So look, wait, I'm wait, trying wait, to... Wait, I'm did, trying, did you not, hang on, sir. I'm trying to help you, Tom. You can't elude from the truth. So do you want me to tell you the, the evidence for Christianity? Uh, I think you already have, and I think it's, it's obviously wrong. So again, you can move a part of an object, even if the object is infinite. So you can have an infinite string, and a part of the string can and move. who's doing the moving then? It's always moving. It's never stopped moving. It's always moving. The string itself is moving. That means it's finite. So that no, means no, no, it's no, 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 no. I, I just debunked that. Hang on, sir. I just debunked that. This is what I said wait, 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 earlier. Wait, 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 wait. So, so an object can be infinite it, and hang move. Hang on, sir. I'm backing... What no, 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 you have to, this right. is the point, this is the point, I think, this hang on, is, sir. no, 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 hang on, hang, hang on. on, hang on, hang on, sir, hang on, sir, so you keep saying that an object can't be infinite and move, because if it moves, that means it's finite, I can have an infinitely long string with two chords, three chords, one goes right, one goes left, they go left infinitely, and one goes up, and the one goes up, it's, it's finite, and it wiggles, it wiggles just fine, so I have an object that's infinite, and a part of it is finite and moving, there's no contradiction there. So I just proved you wrong. Here, here's an infinite object are, that can move. There are other things I would like to do today, but you're referencing pi, the diameter, the circumference of a circle. And I've what? already said this to you earlier. Hang on, sir. Pi is an irrational number because the circumference of a circle is finite and is contingent on an already pre-existing infinite. I didn't, so your I didn't assertion say, I didn't say anything about on, circles. So your assertion to your assertion to an infinite regress is an unlimited regress. That's how, that's why with the decimals you draw a line in between the decimals. So that's why the line is the circle expanding is unlimited. I, I didn't say anything about circles You're or getting, pi. You don't know what infinite up the definitions of infinite and unlimited. I just so, I just looked up the definition from a mathematics journal. It said that it that you were wrong about the definition. So I don't know. No, I could. I've got the. I've got a mathematics as well. In okay. Saying that infinite is measured by size, not by numbers. So you can't just appeal to one individual. So to go to Christianity, we're jumping to theology. Okay. Uh, we're jumping to theology. 
So the, the evidence for Christianity is the colors. So shapes proves uh, shapes proves God, and <gasps> colors proves the God oh, of the God. Bible. Because, hang on, sir. Uh, oh, hang on. So the three primary colors of the color spectrum is red, yellow, and blue. Fire is also red, yellow, and blue. So to give you an illustration, <sighs> in the beginning, God created, hang on, in the be- in Genesis 1, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. End quote. So that means he would have created colorless matter. And then Genesis 1, 3, and God said, let there be light, and there was light. End quote. So the three primary colors of red, yellow, and originates from light, and light originates from the eternal fire of red, yellow, and blue. So to give you, this is why I said to you, can you please have my opener ready? And I'm almost finished here, and then I'll let you respond. In Matthew chapter 25, verse 41, then he will say to those on his left, depart from me, you who are cursed into the eternal fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. So the key word in that verse is eternal fire. So that's where we get the red, yellow, and blue. And then going back to Genesis 1, so, and God said, let there be light, question. and there was light. So color re- requires an outside source after the creation of matter, because light <sighs> is not matter. Light can convert into matter, and this, can, and this, is, this just comports with basic science, that light slash energy has three components a thermal energy for heat chemical energy for matter and electrical energy for speed wait light has chemical energy did you say light has chemical energy i said light slash energy so you said light has three parts right you said light has three components to it i said light slash energy light slash energy light and energy Light I have to be very is, picky with my words. Light is energy. It is a kind of energy. So, so what do you what do you think about these? The, why do you think red, blue, and green are the primary colors? What do you think makes them primary colors? Um, they could primary means that that they are independent of each other. So, to elaborate on this, no two colors make red, no two colors make yellow, and no two colors make blue. You can test this out yourself with crayons or you can go on YouTube. So to summarize this whole discussion, which should have ended in like 30 seconds, shapes proves God and colors proves the God of the Bible. So the evidence of God has been all around you. You cannot deny shapes and colors, sir. So that's not what primary colors means. Primary colors means any group of colors which other colors can be obtained by mixing. So red, blue, and green are just the ones we choose, but you could use other colors and get all the colors too. They just need to be like opposed colors. So so green, purple, yeah, and orange. Yeah, I'm, I'm just reading this off of a science journal about colors. Primary colors, definition, any group of colors from which but other you colors... You know this to begin with. What is wrong with you? What what does so I have what? to reiterate? So, 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 so primary colors are any group of colors from which other colors can be obtained by mixing. It's not colors that can't be obtained by mixing. They're colors that can be obtained by mixing. So, but it's not red, blue, and green are only the primary colors we choose. They're not like magic. I don't know why you keep like referencing them. When and- you mix, hang on, I have to educate you on colors. When you mix red, yellow, and blue, you get the full color spectrum. No, you get brown, but okay. If you, if you mix red, yellow, you and blue, you get you get brown. Means. So so I have to clarify so, things with you now. So red, yellow, and blue are three colors that, if you mix in different proportions, can produce all of the other colors on the visual spectrum. Yes, but so could any of the other primary colors. So like green. The secondary colors, blue and yellow. Yes. So, so any combination of the primary colors can be used to make other primary colors. Yes. Yeah, that's what I said earlier. Primary means that colors oh, makes colors. You said no it two. can't be, but okay. I to, no, I didn't. I, I have to reiterate. I'm not just talking to you. I'm addressing the listeners as well. Um, no two colors make red. No two colors make yellow. And no two colors make blue. So in context of... 
Um, no, you said can't. You just said can't. Sphere, hang on. So, so in context to what, to what I was saying earlier, those three primary colours originate from the eternal fire of red, yellow, and blue. So to, to, I don't, you, if you don't know colours, you, you may not know uh, the evidence behind fire. So uh, 600 degrees to reach the colour red, 1,200 degrees to reach the colour 1,400 degrees to reach the colour blue. So there's no getting around that. The evidence there's also purple and God. green and yellow. Purple is red and blue. Right. So you can get like essentially any color you want from fire. It's not just red, blue, and green. Red, blue, and green are just frequencies need, of light. But you need the fire first to add things to it. Right. Yes. So, so if we took fire and fire existed and then we like slow it down, like we just move away from it faster, it'll be more red. And if we move closer to it, it'll be more blue. Like what? Well, I don't have, no, I have any idea still, how But this, it still exists. Yes. Yeah, that's, so fire, it's the, fire exists. The colors still exist. Fire, yeah, fire so. exists. So, so look, colors, is, frequencies I of light. I want to ask you, I want to ask. I mean, you can't get question. ultraviolet light from, co- from combining red, what? green, and blue. Hang on. What is, what is your problem with our father God? I'm, that's a genuine question, Tom. Uh, the Christian one? Well, the mass murder is kind of a problem. The murdering, drowning ba- millions of babies, the, uh, killing people for no reason, the disagreement, mass murder, genocide, those are problems I have, but I still have no idea how you get God from colors. That makes no sense. That's the God of the Bible. Shapes for his God. Shapes for his um, God. So to address, hang on, to address your concern <laughs> morality. And we won't go too far deep into this because there's other things I want to do. God, because God is eternal, he and the lack of fire. So he it's almost a mercy killing because if he, he's potentially saving life, if he, if he knows, uh, hang on, because he, he knows um, those going to the lake of fire. So it's, so if he knows these people going to the lake of fire, why would he not flood the world? If these people are going, if these, especially these children, if they're going to grow up to become sinners, why is that an issue for God to flood the world? Because he's drowning millions of babies without their consent. So it's, it's, it's evil and immoral. But I, I still want to know, like, colors are an illusion produced by the human brain. They don't actually exist. So why, what is, what is this colors thing you keep referencing? I don't get how colors so, prove hang on. You're, Jesus. You, you jump from one point to the other. Well, yeah, because I, I still want to talk about the colors. Like, how do colors prove Jesus? I don't get it. Uh, to summarize, God uh, shapes proves God, and colors proves the God of the Old and New Testaments. And I just, I'll just reiterate that this is why I said, Tom, just have the opener ready. The so opener would not help me. Things. The opener would so not. The three way primary. You, hang on, sir. The three primary colors of the color spectrum are red, yellow, and blue. Color originates from light, and light originates from the eternal fire of red, yellow, and blue. What eternal fire? There's no eternal fire. Uh, we're on theology. You can't jump back to cosmology. Because you, what? So I, I, you can't deny shades. We're on theology, sir. Objects exist, yes. Colors are a result of light, yes. None of this has anything to do with a god. So um, the, what, the, the discussion of shades was a cosmological discussion so that from there you ha- we understand colors are also cosmological colors, hang on colors. we understand hang on sir we understand that god exists through shapes no and then at all. once we come to that realization we then move on to theology so right. now we're on so- theology and there's colors the colors of these shapes Cruise the God of the Old and New Testament. Yeah, so so I still asked how like five minutes ago, and then you just said a bunch of gibberish that didn't answer the question. How exactly do colors prove Jesus? It proves God of the Old and New Testament. How? That's, you don't that's, need to see you don't you don't need to see somebody to know that they exist. You how? haven't seen George Washington. Okay, okay. So I'm still on the how. How do colors prove Jesus or or the God of the Old and New Testament? How do colors prove Jesus, or the Christian God, the Christian anything. It, 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 it proves that Moses had communication with God. 
Because Colors. Moses couldn't have. Hang on, sir. Because Moses couldn't have possibly known the three primary colors of the color spectrum and light. So, so, so he colors, had, colors. But, hang on, but where, Moses, but where, what? what? Theology now. So Moses didn't even exist. First of all, Mo, the consensus of historians is Moses didn't exist. But I, I still don't see how. Even if Moses existed, how that has anything to do with colors or how colors do anything to show the Christian God of the Old Testament is true. Because of the eternal fire. What what does that mean? What does that mean? So how does how does colors show the earth an eternal fire? Because those because God is perfect and love, <laughs> he will not he will hang on, he will not mislead his people with the three primary colors. And not only that, there's evidence of Adam and Eve, there's evidence of blood. In colors. This is all from colors. The evidence of colors you cannot deny because it's all around you. Colors don't exist. Colors are illusions made by the human brain. Why, what, how does this have anything to do with God? Are you listening to yourself? Yes. Color is light. Yeah, light Genesis exists. One, three. Light colors are just our our eyes' way of differentiating different frequencies of light, but the frequencies don't actually have color. This is how our brains interpret it. So color doesn't actually exist. It's it's a product of our brains from different frequencies of light. It's frequencies of light, light exist. Uh, yes, yeah. the light. That's what I said to you. So Genesis light one three. I said to reiterate again. The three primary colors. Of the color spectrum, red, yellow, and blue, it originates from light. Right. And light originates from the eternal fire of red, yellow, and blue. So, so you're saying light exists, and the only way light could exist was if it was created by some eternal fire thing, and it wasn't. That's because it's the only way it could have possibly existed. That's your evidence, or something? Yeah, we're on theology, sir. That is the evidence. Yes. Yes. So light can come about without an eternal fire. Problem solved. No, that's just an assertion. We're on. No, no, no. You, you what you oh, said trying, is an assertion. You're trying to, you're trying to reset. I can, I can create light with a flashlight. I don't need an eternal fire to do it. We're, we're talking about the origins. Uh. Yeah, yeah. I can create light from nothing with a flashlight, with no light to light. But you're the, you're the, the consciousness behind that light. Correct. There is no consciousness behind that light. It's a flashlight. Flashlights don't have consciousness. All I'm doing is but pressing the button. You, but you're the one flicking on the light switch. Yes, I'm flicking the light switch. I can, yeah. I can turn. I can make it stop. I can like just throw it at the wall, and the wall can flick it. But so light can be created so just fine with no the, eternal yeah. fire. So to go back to what I was going to say earlier, God, who is an infinite consciousness, is the necessary prime mover. For there to be shapes and colors. No, so that isn't the case. You don't need a necessary prime mover. It's totally made up shit that no one in philosophy or science accepts. But more importantly, you can have light without an eternal fire. You don't need an eternal fire to create light. So you just gave your opinion. No, I gave the opinion of the majority of scientists in every academic field. That's that's their opinion. You don't know the consensus. Though. Why are you appealing to authority? You don't know the consensus. I do know the consensus. I actually have the and, papers. And, well, then send it through. It doesn't okay. even matter because it's Phil a surveys. Phil surveys paper. Uh, that's the philosophy one. The physics and one I is a contemporary this. view of standard f of physics. So that's the physics one. There's one in histor history. There's a number of history ones I have saved in my new book. Um, there's some in biology. I have the ones from Julian Mosolino about neurology and uh, cognitive science. Like I have them all. They're they're freely available in all of my different debates. It's I mentioned. It's a fallacy. Them. What's a fallacy? It's a fallacy because. What's a fallacy? Data is available for everyone. So depending what, what's on what's a fallacy? Worldview, that's how they would. Hang on, sir. What? What's in, in you said? It's a fallacy. What's that's a fallacy? How, depending depending what, on the, what, the individual's worldview. What is a they fallacy? Would interpret the data differently. What is so, a fallacy? And the thing is. What is the fallacy? The thing is. Name the fallacy. Hang on. You don't. You don't know if these. Stop! Stop! Go back. You said there's a problem. You said there's a fallacy. So where is? What's the fallacy? What's the problem? You point out the problem. Where? Which fallacy? You're, you're appealing. 
you can't appeal to authority. Okay, stop right there. Appeal to authority. Because Wait, stop, stop, stop. An appeal to authority fallacy is only fallacious if it's a false authority. Uh, Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy fallacy is number nine, appeal to authority. So appealing to the actual consensus of experts is not an appeal to authority fallacy. That is not a fallacy. What is a fallacy? But I can just do the same thing. I could just appeal to no, the authority of mine. It doesn't no, you can't, because the consensus only indicates one thing. There is only one consensus. You can't do it. You could try. You're not going to fail. So there's not a fallacy um, at all. The, the atheists are below seven percent worldwide. Yes, and they make up the majority of academics. No, all the if you, if you go on Google, you can Google this yourself. Atheists. Uh, and agnostics as well are below around seven percent. Yeah, yeah. So again, so, those the papers, is, the papers I sent you. Remember, remember. Wait, 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 wait. So remember, I told you about those papers, the Phil surveys paper. It it's the biggest survey of philosophers in the world, and it shows that seventy two percent of philosophers are atheists. The people who who have the majority of academics are atheists. So the consensus shows that you're wrong. Like there are lots of random people who are theists, but when you go to academia, they're mostly atheists because all the evidence does not indicate a God. It indicates a not God. Um, you have, n I, I, I doubt you actually have those pages. Wait, wait, go, go, go to Google all right now. Go to, go to Google. Phil surveys all paper. All these groups. Phil surveys paper results. Google. You can find it right now. You can also, if you want, I can, I have the physics one ready for you. I can tell you how to Google that one. I, I have the history ones ready for you. I can tell you how to Google those. All of these I have, you can, you can search Why them yourself. Why don't you just send them through, Tom? Why don't you just send S them through? Send them through where? Like you they're posted them, on the Discord. You? They're on the Discord. If you go to papers, academic papers, there is a section on Discord where they are posted for you to see. And the, and the thing is, it doesn't matter because you people are Well, then that not. proves you it's not a know. fallacy. You so, it, and so, but you what, wait, wait, on, wait, wait. you don't know the, the worldview thing. You don't know if these they're satanic people, right? They're satanic. So, so wait, wait, wait. So, on, no, no, no. I, I understand your argument. You said this a few times. You said we don't know that they're satanic or devil worshippers or whatever. That's that is actually a fallacy. That's called an appeal to motive fallacy. Their motive doesn't make a difference to the truth or falsity of what they're saying. So you can't say they could be devil worshippers. Therefore, you can't take them seriously because that no, is a fallacy. I can turn that around. Hang on. Go for it. Did he leave? No, I muted him. Why did you mute him? Unmute him. You in here. Uh, is he still muted? Unmute him. No, he's unmuted. Oh, okay. Hang on. Did you? Was I muted? Yeah, somebody, one of the mods, muted you. It wasn't me. My apologies for that. Ah, oh, well, I have to. I have to. Well, so, yeah, so, um, I'll, I'll just say. Hang on. I just let me. Claim is that. Yeah, I if, wanted to if, if you're, catch up that, on that argument. That would that's like me argument? saying that why is it majority then all atheists? Is it what? all stems back to the individual's worldview? So so again, you don't that's, know if these people are apatheists or not. So so again, that's called an appeal to motive fallacy. That is a fallacy that does not work. But I can turn that around on you as well. Why did because why isn't the mid so then why isn't I still doubt these papers you're, you're sending me, and it doesn't even matter. Why isn't the majority, all of them, of these ac academics all atheists? Uh, you don't need universal agreement, but that's not an appeal to motive. So an appeal to motive fallacy is saying someone has a motive to do something, therefore what they're saying is wrong. So I never said that. You said that, so you're wrong. That's a fallacy. Yeah, um, but I didn't say that. Lie. That's what Right. Right. They are apatheists or not? That, that's that's called an appeal to motive fallacy. You can't do that. But look, there's there's no denying. You can't deny the um, seven percent of atheists worldwide. You can't deny shapes and colors. I, I never so said is there I any did other deny either of those concerns things. Concerns you have any with me? So I agree, shapes and any colors other? exist. I agree. I don't know what the actual percent of atheists are, but yes, it's small. But none of that supports your position. Shapes and colors don't indicate a god or the Christian god. They exist perfectly fine in the natural worldview of perfectly just eternal natural energy stuff that can move and be eternal, no problem. Like the majority of physicists agree. Do you have any other points so that you want to bring up? You're the one who brought up the. Hang on, you're the one who brought up the census. So, see so now you're trying to start the whole discussion again. Well, no, you, like, you asked. You you, sp you you specifically asked about that. No, you make assertions and then you, you bring up so many points. 
is you try to elude from well, you, your first original point. Well, you just said, so, you said your points were that shapes and colors exist and that the atheists, I can't deny that shapes and colors exist and I can't deny that atheists are 7% of the population. So I addressed those three points. I said, yes, shapes and colors exist. They don't indicate a God. And yes, I assume atheists are about 7%. That's probably about right. And none of that helps your position. So yes, I agree all three of those things. None of that indicates a God. So if you take a solid shape, okay? Yes. Without without an outside intervention, how do you get more solid shapes inside of it? It moves on its own, so it's not solid. But then why wouldn't the whole shape move? Why wouldn't it just be a one brand new particular instead of multiple particulars? Because there are multiples. Like if you have two particles and they both exist, then there's it's not they're not one, they're two. They're two different things. But we're talking about a singular particular. No, there's two. There's two different particles. They're not singular. Um, this is just an analogy, sir. Right. Like, so, so in this yeah. analogy, we have a two a universe with two particles. There isn't one particle. There's two particles, and they're both moving. In the here and now, yes. In between stars and planets is hydrogen and. Yeah, I'm saying this is this universe is so eternal. What, it's a different universe. Your, it's always existed. It just has two particles, and they're both moving around. They've never come in contact with one another. They're just jumping around the universe in different parts, and they're eternally moving. It's just a universe with two moving particles, infinitely. You're not making any sense, sir. So, okay, how does, that, your, how does that I not think make you sense? Said this earlier. How does it not make Hang sense on, to I'm imagine just, a universe? I'm, 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 I'm getting to that point. Okay. So, and I think you said this earlier. Are you saying that the universe, the cosmos of all the stars and planets that have always existed? The cosmos has already existed. The stars and planets have not existed. So the energy that makes the stars and planets has always existed. And then they made the stars and planets from fluctuations in the movement of the energy. No, because you would, you would see one giant star Instead no. of multiple stars. No. So again, I can have a universe. Is that infinite? I can have a universe with two, two particles that are just separate and never one. And they're both infinitely moving and they're both infinitely separate. And they never come in contact. And that's perfectly fine. You can have two stars that are both infinitely moving and not one star in the universe. And they're just infinitely there. And not a problem. No, because then even if you make that assertion, then you would just get two giant objects, not multiple objects. Two means multiple. There are trillions of stars out there. Yes, so, so if you can do it with two, you can do it with three, you can do it with four, you can do it with trillions. You get the same result in every case. You can have a tri you can have a universe with a trillion stars that are all separate and never contact one another and are all moving and are all infinite. That's perfectly fine. Well, there you go. That's That's what I was trying to get across is that you're saying that the universe and all the stars and planets have always existed the energy that makes them has always no, existed but there's no movement in that it's, i could freely move my arms right so move there's movement there's movement it, there's 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 trillions of stars they're all infinite they're all moving and they there's no problem with that you don't know what infinite means you keep that's i think that's where the problem is what do you what do you think infinite means? Infinite means at all places at the same time. That's omnipresent. That's not infinite. Um, in in regards to God, yes, the universe. So so if you're saying is so finite, there can and, be and God is infinite. So if energy is but omnipresent, he's omnipresent. He's omnipresent in the universe. So. In a naturalistic universe, you can have energy that's omnipresent at every point and have two particles at two different points, and they're not omnipresent. So energy is omnipresent. It's infinite by your definition. Particles are not infinite. They're not omnipresent. They're just a single point in the infinite omnipresent energy. So then I'll, I'll play your game. So then what is in between those two particulars then? The energy. Um, so that will leave you with one particular. No, there's one, like, substance, multiple particulars. So, like, water well, is... what is in between those particulars? The substance of energy. So it's like a string. And so then you're back to one particular. No, no, you can have multiples. Like, if you have a string with two beads on it, you got three things there. Two beads, one string. 
So what is in between these particulars? So you have two beads, those are the particulars, and there's a string, and the string is in between the two beads. Yeah, but that's just one particular. That's three particulars. There's two beads, one string. No, we're addressing the origin. We're not talking... Yeah, so I'm saying these are all eternal. So you have an eternal string, two eternal beads. The two beads are connected by the string, and they're all eternal and, and moving. And So that's so you're, you're going back to your fantasy that the universe and all the stars and planets have always existed. There's no movement in that world of you, sir. The beads are moving. The string is moving. They're all eternal. They're all moving. Where's the problem? It's infinite in size. There's no movement. Yeah, yeah, the There's string no the string the string is infinite and in size debunk, and it's still moving. I can debunk your claim just by moving my arms around. N strings can be infinitely long and still move. Like water like water moves just fine even though it occupies Unlimited. all the space. Don't you right. No, 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 no. I, I agree. So your 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 present your definition of omnipresent. Strings can be omnipresent and still move. It can still move just fine. So to for the, the for the listeners Tom is alluding to the universe always existing, all the stars and planets. No, I'm not alluding to it, existed. I'm explicitly but saying debunk, it. But to, but to debunk that position is that there is movement, therefore the universe is finite. No, movement does not debunk that. Try again. Yes, it does, sir. No, it doesn't. Yes, it does. No, it doesn't. Um, the universe is finite, therefore... There is movement. Nope. The universe the is infinite, infinite universe, and there is, there is no movement. movement. There's infinite universe and there's movement. Debunked. I've just debunked your argument. No, sir. Yes, sir. You're, go you're, you're going back to a finite universe. No, it's infinite, infinite universe, infinite movement, infinite energy. Perfectly fine. So then what, so then if you're, this goes back to, because when the moment you say that it's moving, that means something. So that something exists. Yep. Particles so exist. There's infinite energy and their no. particles are moving in the infinite energy and there's no problem with that. You're saying that an infinite structure of matter is moving. Yes. That means it's moving into something else. No. Therefore, that infinite structure is now automatically shifted no, no, into no. a finite structure. No, I can take a wheel and spin it. It's not moving into something else. It's still in the exact same spot. It's just changing position in the exact same spots. So you can have omnipresent energy changing positions like flowing water and it's still occupying all the same space. So you can have flowing water in the same space. It never like occupies new space. There's not a problem here. Look, um, just for the listeners, the reason... This the reason why I'm a dragon because I've sent Tom my open up weeks oh, a week ago, so he knows this opener already. So I am comporting with uh, two Timothy uh, verse tw two verse uh, chapter twenty five is that opponents must be gently instructed in the hope that God will grant them repentance, <laughs> leading them to the knowledge of the truth. So. This is not a sneak okay, attack on okay, Tom. Okay, he so, already knows my opener. I've sent that's, that's, my opener multiple times to him. That's fine. So again, you can have an object like a wheel, and the wheel can spin in the exact same position, and it doesn't change space, and it can move, occupying no new space. Water can move. There can be flows of water, even though it occupies all the same space. So you can have something that occupies all the space and moves just fine. It doesn't occupy any new space. Um, so then what is the on the edge of that? wheel nothing just infinitely water infinitely in the water example infinitely water do you listen to yourself sir i said what is beyond that edge of that wheel the wheel example is just the wheel can move in place without having without occupying new space the same thing is true as water so so, what, so beyond beyond the edge of that wheel would it be physical or non-physical? Yeah, it, it would, would be, be like physical. an infinite wheel. It's just infinitely wheel everywhere that keeps going on, just bigger and bigger wheel, and the wheel can just keep spinning. It's just infinitely wheels in all, all I mean, directions. That, that's not your... So you're saying you're talking about an unlimited wheel that it will never reach an end? No, I'm saying a wheel that is omnipresent. So there's an omnipresent wheel, and the wheel can spin, and it's fine. Like There's no contradiction there. Look, your attempt of trying... I don't know if you're trying... But you, 
Where, where's Never. The, where's no the... human. I don't get jealous. Hang on. I don't get jealous, sir. No human will ever get a reaction out of it. So your attempt of trolling here is is fine because where... I'm, 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 because there is an audience. Okay. Okay. So, so, I'm, so I'm where's, a, where's the, the contradiction? Well. Where's the contradiction in a wheel, an infinite wheel that is spinning the entire thing, the entire infinity of the entire thing is spinning and moving. How is that a contradiction? Um, that's your analogy because beyond that, it would still be something. No, no, it's an infinite wheel, all spinning. The entire thing, the infinite omnipresent thing, is itself spinning. Thing is itself spinning. How is that a contradiction? How is that a contradiction? Someone's got because a, that a, wheel. Because if you're if you're standing just centimeters away from the edge of that wheel, there's no edge. You see something. It's well, omnipresent. It's infinite in size. Yes, it's infinite in size. It's an infinite wheel, and it's spinning. Yeah, but it's not going to, you're still stuck as, in the non theistic worldview, going back to my second sentence, an infinite uh, structure of matter can't move to get the big bang. It's spinning. Bang, it's spinning. To and the big it bang. can't move. It's spinning. So it's it moving. Can't move. it's, it's spinning. It's moving. So you can't but say it can't move. It's spinning. Well, then I'll just, I'll just rephrase it then. It can't do, it can't make more particulars inside of itself. If it's spinning and the parts inside of it hit each other, then they can. They can break apart. They can create new particles. They can interact with one another. Like the, the wheel can break. Like one part of the wheel spins at one speed and one part of it spins at a different speed and then breaks apart and creates new parts. Like, yes, it can. No problem there. And for something and, and for something to be spinning infers that it's a shape. It's finite. Nope, it's so infinite. It's, it's omnipresent of, and it's spinning. There's no, no problem there. No, because there's no movement to begin with. Is yeah, that it's, all it's, it's all spinning. It's all spinning and different parts no. of it are moving at different speeds. Not a problem. No. So even if you make that assertion, you can't have particulars inside of it. I, I just proved that so, false. I don't so, know what so, you're trying to do here. So a <laughs> wheel can spin and different parts are spinning at different speeds and then they break apart and create new particulars. Proved you false. No, because that would just be giant particular. Not multiple particles. There are trillions upon trillions of stars and planets. Yes. So you go outside and look so, up. So a, a, a wheel is made of trillions and trillions of particles. If one part of the wheel is spinning at one speed and a different part of the wheel is spinning at a different speed, those particles are going to break apart and make lots and lots of new little particles that are not a part of the wheel anymore. Trillions of them. No, because that that part that particular would still consist of the already infinite particular because then you then have yes to you have an infinite particular in which is then made of lots of different parts so there was one thing stuck with one particular that can't do anything nope the one particular is moving infinite wheel in all omnidirectional wheel and it's spinning at different speeds so it breaks apart into lots and lots of different things and they all interact and make new things not a problem no because for it to be spinning but, means that there's an ready pre-existing infinite nope outside of that of that wheel that's nope. what i said to you so i've already debunked this so my and my analogy your, your, completely destroys you so i'm no, but i'm gonna need to go to pretty soon so i didn't say anything about pie so so you're, 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 i'm sorry sir i'm sorry sir but you're kind of done so i've, I've destroyed your argument i need to pee and no, you, thank you for the debates you, you uh you've survive. been debunked Debunk. 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 All right. Thank you for the debate, sir. I appreciate your fifty dollars. Uh, You've been uh, I'm got, uh, So, do I have your permission to post it? Yeah, you can post it wherever you want. Knock yourself out. Okay. I'll be back in. A, I got to pee. I'm so, well, that's that was my intention. But look, I sent you the opener. This is not a sneak attack on you, Tom. Bro, he's not even here. Please stop. Yeah, so does anyone else want to just have any questions for me before I go? That was not that funny. Was not funny. Are you Adam? Are you Adam? Philip, I'm a, Phillip, I'm a, I'm a little confused. Could you, little you explain something to me? Explain something to me. Yes. Yes. Are you speaking? Are you speaking? Red. Red. Okay. Uh, Okay, so you said infinity implies the, the absence of motion, right? Uh, infinite. In a non-theistic worldview. Wait, why? Because that infinite consists of all the space. has height, depth, and width. 
Wait, but why does infinity imply the absence of motion? I guess I'm a little confused there. Um, well, I'll just reiterate, in a non-theistic worldview, uh -huh. the infinite structure of material okay. consists, occupies all the space, because that space is height, depth, and width. Okay. And not only that, energy, in a non-fusic worldview, energy is colourless. So even in a non-fusic worldview, you would still see an immaterial eternal God because through that colourless structure, you would still see something. So like... Well, that was interesting. You're saying that you're saying that infinite structure implies the absence of motion and virtue of already encompassing everything. Is that what you're saying? I'll just reiterate. So, yes, in a non-theistic worldview, infinite matter cannot move to get the Big Bang, and it cannot move to make more particulars inside of it. You can. Why not? Because there's no room for it to do anything, and Why? it would, and it wouldn't, and it, there would just be one giant. There wouldn't be any life to begin with. But I want to go back to that first thing you said. You said that nothing would be Look, able was, to move. I'm just confused as to um, why that's the case. Yeah, sorry. I'm gonna. I'll just send you the message. I'll send you my opener. Uh, just give me a few seconds. Sure. Because I don't like to do sneak attacks. Um, but what was your... Sorry, what were you saying, Red? I'm just saying, like, I'm confused by why an infinite material structure would imply the absence of motion like it would. At least, like, there, there's some contradiction that concludes from that. No, because an infinite structure is that all places at the same time. So therefore, for there to be, for it to take shape into a sphere uh -huh. or a cylinder, that whole structure would then turn its, its whole self into a shape. There wouldn't be multiple shapes inside of that already structure. Well, I don't see how that implies the absence of motion, even if true. Even if you make that assertion, the only motion that you will get is energy converting into. Well, I thought a moment entropy. ago you said, um, that minute ago you said that an infinite material structure on a non theistic view implies an absence of motion. Now you're saying there is motion. Oh, well, the change of form. But, it's, but that's why I said to you, even if you make that assertion of movement, you still can't get multiple shapes inside an already infinite structure. Therefore, this universe was created out of its contingent on God, who is eternal and infinite in size. He is an infinite consciousness. Mm. Okay. And you can test this out yourself. We are made in God's image. So if you close your eyes, your thoughts have no boundaries. That that explains his um, infinite size. Uh -huh. You can visualize anything that explains his omnipotence and, be, and his eternal nature is like entering a dream. It's like when you're when you're in a dream, you you just are. You don't question how you got into that dream. You just are in that dream. God just is. He's not a human. It says that in the Bible, like word for word, that he is not human. And this is back in Matthew chapter 25, verse 41, about the eternal fire. So then he was, apart from me, you who are cursed into the eternal fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. So God's true form is infinite fire with a consciousness. Tom, are you back?
<laughs> yeah, I'm back. What's up? Yeah, I just wanted to. I just wanted to keep to, um, this guy preaching here. I mean, uh, yeah, we can move on. If anybody else has got any questions, I'm probably gonna get some dinner in about ten minutes anyway. Yeah, I was gonna ask you one more question for you guys. I just wanted to say one last thing to to Philip. I was just saying, like, it sounded like a moment ago you were just saying that it implied the absence of motion and just admitted there is motion. So I'll let the audience, you know, think on that one. But anyways. Yo, what's up, Tom? Yeah, I brought that. I brought that exact point up, like I think forty minutes ago. But yeah, I'm <laughs> so. Uh, anyway, other questions? Anybody got? Yeah, yeah. yeah I know. We're patiently waiting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hang on. I'll, I'll go. I'll just say one thing before I go. Go for it, man. Is that um, well, two points actually. So the oh, better movement, like if it's moving, that means reaching something. If something's moving, that means it's it's reaching something. So so that means it's not infinite to begin with. And just to address the aparthiest in here, an aparthiest is someone who knows that God exists, however, doesn't care. <sighs> you have to understand. <sighs> all right, all right, the, the, all right, dude. Alter- hang on, yeah, hang on. Just, no, no, no. All right, let's, let's no, just let on. me say this. Like, we, 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 you're Seriously, reading I, yourself. I, You've heard I, this before. We I don't stepped hear in deeper puddles. Shut the fuck up. All right. Anybody else got any questions? No. 